Okay, Dylan Gabriel. I mean, you face some good quarterbacks this year. Yeah. Where's he going to rank up in there? Yeah, I, I, I think he's, you know, I think obviously a proven commodity. Um, you know, I think probably he would be the best guy that we've placed, played to this point. Um, just from the standpoint of experience and, um, you know, they're running him with the football now, um, you know, making you play with all 11 guys, uh, can make all the throws. So very talented veteran, um, been there and done it. So great challenge for us. Coach, what do you say out of your team and how they were able to adjust to Oklahoma State's offense on Saturday that kind of gives you some confidence for the rest of the season? Well, you know, I think we're an adjustment in process all the time uh, with this, with our, with our defense. Um, and what I mean by that, I, I think we've got some young folks that are, you know, everything that happens to them is brand new. And, you know, we have to do a great job as coaches um, helping bring that along. And again, the sense of urgency in which it has to happen uh, is heightened every week in this league. Um, you know, this challenge is completely different than the last challenge. Uh, you know, on the road at night, um, you know, undefeated football team ranked offense in all the categories. Uh, so we have to continue just to bring that group along. Um, the adjustment process is ongoing and will be ongoing. Um, but I'm I'm proud of our guys because they really want to adjust and continue to move forward. So we'll keep trying to do that. Um, you know, I thought the effort and attitude was really um, probably as good as it had been all season on our side of the football. And um, there's stuff we have to clean up, obviously. And um, But I think that's been true of every game. I don't think we've played um, you know, standardized Iowa State defense to this point. And uh, some of that's going to be natural. We don't, we don't have some of those veterans out there. So we're continuing to work through that process. When coaches come, maybe not so much now. I, I don't know about now. But I know back a while back when you, when you changed and the mm -hmm. success you were having with the three-man front. When coaches come to watch, you know, just to watch practices, to talk to you, to pick your brain, Venables did, I think. Mm -hmm. What, what do you tell them? I mean, do you go, do you go all in with them, or, or, or what do you? I, I think really it becomes what they want out of it. You know, in all fairness, Randy, I, I don't, we don't really tell them any more than they ask. Um, you know, some of the staffs, I think those guys were here when they were at Clemson, were here for three or four days, and you know, they were here to try to understand, learn some of it, and use some of it as a part. Uh, you know, some schools, um, you know, come here and they want to do the whole thing. And so they spend as much time as they can and study the film. Um, it's never the same. You know, it, it never, I mean, I know when we get things from other teams, uh, it, it's just not the same. You don't know everything that they know. And you, you just, you don't. You don't know why, you know, all the whys and all the fixables and all that. And I think the same thing is true with this defense. Um, you know, I think it's, I think it's, as people come in, they all want different things from it. Man, we want to use it for third down. We want to use it just as a change up in, in two minute drills. Um, and so everybody uses it for something different. And um, you just try to help them with what you can. And I think that's been the case in coaching for as long as I've been in this business. Everybody's been willing to share. And um, we've always tried to do that as well. Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was at Emporia State. Um, yeah, they spent some time here, Coach Nardo. They spent some time here, and um, but yeah, it came and put it in for those guys uh, when he was trying to help his team down there. So um, I'm all in favor of people that want to help their players, um, and so we try to help as best we can, and but we don't try to give them any more than they want. <clears throat> Oklahoma is an offense that is very heavily predicated on pre-snap reads for their quarterback. What's the importance of you guys disguising your coverages pre-snap this weekend? Well, it's hard to do because um, they're going so fast. Um, you know, it's hard to, you're really just trying to get lined up. And I think that's probably more of a concern um, for everybody that plays them and has played them and will play them. Um, they're banking on you not getting your feet set and your eyes set, um, not being able to read keys and do all that stuff. So I, I worry more about us um, than I do what they're looking at. Um, because it is going so fast, um, that's where a veteran quarterback has some experience, kind of knows what it looks like. We have to do a great job of, of playing our defense. And, and, you know, we put it in way back when um, for this concept of the speed of the play. And that's why we did what we did back in 2017. So, um, you know, obviously the people are what make offenses go. Um, their quarterback, their school guys, their O-line, a lot of veterans, tailbacks, um, that's what makes their offense really, really good is their people. 
um, the tempo at which they play, uh, a lot of respect for what they do on offense and how they coach it. Um, but again, we, we, we kind of way back in 17, you all know that when we were, everything in this conference was going 100 miles an hour, everybody. Um, it feels like it's getting back to that a little bit with the teams that we've added and teams that are playing. So I'm worried more about our guys um, getting their feet set and their eyes set um, than probably what he's going to see pre-snap or post. You guys have struggled with the explosive plays a little yeah. bit on the defensive side. Mm -hmm. Iowa had two. I think Oklahoma yeah. State had two as well. Both those are just scoring opportunities. Right. Oklahoma's an explosive offense right. as well. What's the importance of stopping those? Yeah, it's games? critical. Um, it's really why we did all this whole thing to begin with. Um, you know, we let a couple out the gate. Um, Saturday, we let a couple out the gate early, um, you know, against Iowa. Um, it, it really is what this defense was built for. Um, we just have to clean some things up. Uh, I don't look at the film and think, man, it's um, unfixable. You know, I have looked at film before in my life and thought, oh boy, it's unfixable. Uh, I don't feel that. I feel like we've got to do a better job of, you know, making fits and, you know, tackling in space and doing those things. And, um, you know, we've got to do a better job as well defending the deep balls and uh, gotten some pass interferences and some of those things. We've got to do a great job there in the back end. And our guys have worked really hard at it, so we'll continue to do that. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a major point of emphasis for sure. John, how have your mostly young linebackers look to you? I mean, obviously, you didn't want to lose Gary, but it gave opportunities mm -hmm. to Jacob, other guys. It feels like they've had some big moments where they popped and maybe some where they were a little out of position. How would you, how would you assess that group's development? So far? I'm really, you know, uh, again, to this point, I, I think they've just kept keep growing. And again, a lot of us, some of the stuff is still new. I mean, this offense is what's going to happen Saturday is going to be completely new. We try to replicate it as best we can, as everybody does. But um, they'll continue to grow. They want to continue to grow. They their want to is, I mean, Coach White. Those guys have been back there in the film room nonstop. So, very excited about that group because of the want to, and they, they really want to to be better every time they go out. So, and I and I think they are. I really think they are. What would you credit with Dom's <coughs> progression between freshman year and sophomore year? I'm sorry. What would you credit with Dom? Or Dom's. Yeah. Uh, I think growing up. I think maturing. You know. I think he's man. Uh, when you come here sometimes, it's like how I used to be able to get away with doing things. Uh, now you realize everybody that you're playing against is really talented. They're as talented as you are. And when that's the case, then you, you kind of take a step back and think, ooh, that's stuff I used to be able to do in high school. That's not working. And uh, I think he's done a great job of growing. He's changed his body, uh, which has allowed him to grow as well. Um, better conditioned, uh, making more plays, more active in the line of scrimmage. Um, so I, I think just maturity. I, I think growing up and realizing, man, this, if I'm going to be something different, uh, I'm going to have to be different. And I think he's trying to do that. And then, you know, he has those highlight plays, knocking Theo Day's helmet off on the first play of the first game. What does stuff like that do for the defense as a whole, not just for his game? Well, I, I think it kind of builds mentality. I, I think what you're trying to do is, is be a physical defense, be tough, um, you know, compete at the highest level. And, and I think those things, uh, motivate other players to be physical and do the same. Back to Rob's uh, question on the linebackers a little bit. In the past years, you guys have had what the top two or three tacklers have all been linebackers. Mm -hmm. Is that that's not the case so far this year? Is that maybe because of the youth there? Are you maybe getting the safeties more involved, kind of in uh, the run support? I, I'd or? have to be honest with you. I don't even. I would have to look at it. I don't know that I know the answer to your question. Um, I don't really read any of the stats. Uh, try to make sure we try to get guys stopped and the running game and all that. I don't look at those. But I would guess some of that is probably the case. Um, I would have to go back and look and, and see. And uh, But I, I think there is some youth there. And, and I think our safeties, um, we've always used them. I don't think we're doing anything different. Um, you know, Some things, but not, not a lot. So I would just have to look at it. I don't have a real good answer for you. Then with Ike Eziago, you usually true freshmen, and they can play up to like four games now. And mm -hmm. he didn't play any last year at all, spent yeah. the whole season on the sideline. Right. What was that kind of like for him, do you think, to just kind of observe? All year? Um, you know, I, I think Ike's always learning football, you know, to be honest with you. I, I think he's always a guy that's trying to learn the game. Uh, I always call it football 101. Uh, I think he spent a year learning some football one-on-one. -on -one. I think he's still in that process. I think his future is, you know, the ceiling. Um, but going to have to continue to learn the game, like what's going on around me. And uh, he's grown in that area for sure, made some more plays, you know, the other day, uh, showed up on the videotape, starting to feel him a little bit. 
and I think he'll just continue to grow. But I, I think it's a good. It was an experience that he had to have, and he again he's still learning football one on one, and um, that's okay.